He's a very special, very special person. Oh, I'm stoked. I, I just, I just don't want to crash. You can express yourself with your hands and, and what you make, you know. Those are just a few of the extraordinary people that we met in 2014. In the next half hour, we'll get you reintroduced to many more interesting people in this 21st edition of the Best of Lance's Journal. Hello, everybody. I'm Lance Schwartz. Well, we got 2014 started with a trip across the river. The snow ski area at Mount Crescent, Iowa, proves that Nebraskans don't always have to make a long drive to the Rockies just to enjoy some quality time on the slopes. With the Omaha skyline on the horizon, Victor Berglund loves spending time at Mount Crescent. It's certainly big enough for me to have a lot of fun. For snowboarding, it's a beautiful hill. It's steep enough you can get plenty of speed going. It's really good. Julie Schramm enjoys the 10-minute drive from Omaha. Colorado's a long way away. You know, Mount Crescent is fun. You know, if you come up here for a couple hours and, and have a good time and, and bring your kids and have some exercise, and, and that's, that's good. Julie says kids love it. You know, it's not intimidating. When you go down, it's really fun. Over the years, this speedy snowboarder has noticed a fairly common theme at Mount Crescent. Oh, people are definitely surprised when they get here. Mount Crescent's 300 feet of vertical impresses people once they see it in person. My ski area here is the same size, not bigger than most all the ski areas in the entire Midwest. Corby Fleischer has owned Mount Crescent for the past five years, and he says it's hard to compare anything to Colorado. We have, you know, 300 feet of vertical, which is, you know, about 95% of all ski areas in the Midwest are, are smaller than us. This here that we're standing on, it's called Breezeway. Chris Andrew is the director of the Mount Crescent Ski and Snowboard School. It's ideal for learning, and we have an amazing staff of instructors that help facilitate the learning for anybody that's looking to get into the sport. They pride themselves here at Mount Crescent on their extremely accurate weather forecasts, because when they say there's going to be a 100% chance of snow, they're always right. That is possible through our uh, high-tech snowmaking machines. We have dedicated snowmakers that will work around the clock to make sure that that man-made snow is covered on our slopes. Bottom line, there is 100% chance of snow at Mount Crescent Ski Area. That's what I can do at Mount Crescent. Why don't you come on out and show me what you can do. Every winter since 1961, Mount Crescent has been open from December to March. On now to February, where one loyal Lincoln fan named Daryl Hingler was all fired up to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Beatles' arrival in America. Here's saying hello to all my mates. Welcome to my Liverpool lounge. First off here, we have some yellow submarine items. We don't live in the yellow submarine. Here is the rest of the Liverpool Lounge. I call it my man cave dedicated to the boys. Daryl estimates that he's acquired nearly a thousand Beatles items since he fell in love with the Fab Four a half century ago. I had to have something to do with the Beatles on my license plate, so I came up with mop tops. Daryl was just 12 years old, living in Havelock, when he saw John, Paul, George, and Ringo on TV for the first time. I originally saw the Beatles on Channel 1011 right here in Lincoln. Daryl was hooked. And I remember the next day at school, I think I was in the sixth grade, it was all everybody was talking about. Did you see the Beatles? Did you see the Beatles? Daryl is now 61 years old. I'm old enough that I was even in the fan club when they were still together. People ask me all the time, Daryl, with all this stuff you have in this great Beatle room, what's your favorite thing? It's not the Beatles' bus phone. What could you not live without? It's not the Beatles' lunchbox. I would get rid of everything in this room before I would ever part with my original Beatle 45 records. And while he loves all the Beatles songs, one stands out among the rest. My favorite is Penny Lane. 
And it goes a little bit something like this. Penny Lane, there is a bomb showing photographs. Fortunately, Daryl's wife Leslie is also a Beatles fan. So when I was at Pius X, I had a boyfriend at the time, and we danced the lunch hour to I Want to Hold Your Hand. I let me hold your Little Nolan is a third generation Beatles fan, and as you can see, Grandpa couldn't be more proud. We should remember what they really tried to tell us. All you need is love. Thanks for being with me. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Shortly after the 50th anniversary, Paul McCartney came to Lincoln and performed before a packed house at the Pinnacle Bank Arena. Another memorable story that aired in February centered on four loyal public servants that had just left the Henderson Volunteer Fire Department after four decades of serving together. Are you afraid? I was, yes. But uh, you just know what you got to do and you do it. This is the Mount Rushmore of bravery in Henderson over the past 40 years. I think we, most of the time in the fires, we lived on adrenaline. I think it was only appropriate that on the night I visited Henderson, the skies were fire red. Perhaps a fitting farewell salute from the heavens to a loyal quartet of Henderson's finest. I'm Frank Rollins. I've served 46 years for the Henderson Fire and Rescue. I'm Milan Miro. I served 43 years. My name is Keith Friesen. I served 41 years. I'm John Martins, and I served 41 years. And let's just say none of these guys got rich doing it. I got a 100% raise. Zero times 100 still makes zero. These guys got paid in gratitude. To help other people out, I guess. Not to mention the natural rush that comes with risking your life to save someone else's. And the lights came crashing down and everybody, we pulled everybody out. I just totally enjoyed it. 172 years of volunteering together created a band of brothers in Henderson. It's been a good time serving the community. I think we've done a lot of good. We've gone through some hard times, some good times, and the only thing that kept us going a lot of times is the fact that we're all a bunch of good friends and we take care of each other. We have each other's back. For Police Chief Mylon Miro, volunteering on the Fire and Rescue Squad was the natural thing to do. Well, I think it was important where my grandpa started it and my dad was on and a lot of my in-laws were on. And Mylon was part of a special firefighting era in York County. We thought we tried hard and were loyal and very proud of it. We've all got over 40 years and we've seen a lot, done a lot, and I'm sure glad that I had these other three covered my back. Incredibly, this fearless foursome collectively served the Henderson Volunteer Fire Department for 172 years. Wow. On now to March, and this time the focus was on a delightful Lincoln couple who were still in the bakery business at the age of 93. I just like to make good products. I like to be a servant, I guess she's gone. Jim Conroy has been serving Lincoln since 1957. They call it a labor of love. Jim is now 93 years of age. I've enjoyed cooking and baking ever since I was a little tot. And his delightful wife of 65 years. No, I met her at church. <laughs> is also 93 and years old. We the church steps. Well, right now we're making flower shirts. Yeah, we're making Even after nearly six decades in the bakery business, Jim still enjoys coming into work six days a week. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. If it wasn't I didn't like it. <laughs> Grace still puts in five days a week. Oh, I love it. I, j I don't have any problem coming to work. It's very pretty cake. Jim considers himself both a baker well, and an a, artist. It's a form of art, and you, hate, you can express yourself with your hands and, and what you make, you know. He's the baker, so I better say it's very, very good. <laughs> we adopted the five of our children. And now three of those children operate the business. These are all made fresh. There is a lot to like in this bakery. I like the um, macaroons. I, I like, well, I like them all. And so does Lincoln. <laughs> if it doesn't pass the taste, they don't sell it. I don't know how long we'll stay here, do this, because people keep coming in the door. 
<laughs> wanting this, wanting that, and everything. So we just keep on baking and, then, and uh, sticking with it. Jim and Grace are usually up and at them, ready for work and ready for Joe to pick them up at 9 a.m. sharp. If he is just a minute late, he says he's bound to get a reminder phone call. Well, the Fall City boys basketball team headed to state in early March. And the team told me that they owed a great deal of their success to a longtime school board member named Kathy Bartek, who lost her fight against Lou Gehrig's disease in the summer of 2013. She's just been a big part of the program and ever since her kids have been in school. She was, uh, well, she loved basketball. <coughs> she was a huge Tiger supporter, huge. Kathy Bartek's daughters Amanda and Laura, along with husband Tom, got a big surprise before the first game of the season. We got in the locker room and they were all standing there and we still didn't know what was going on and Reese said, we just wanted to let you guys know that we have these blue shoelaces on and we're wearing them this whole season for your mom. Uh, we know she really enjoyed this program and she was a huge supporter for us and we want to dedicate this season to her. Blue is the color for ALS awareness and the blue shoestring served as constant reminders for Reese Hogue and his teammates. Just lacing up before games and just look at the shoelaces and knowing that we're, we're playing for her, we're playing for our town, we're gonna, we need to give everything we have on the court and we're going to do it showing off uh, these shoelaces. Here in the land of the Fall City Tigers, it's been all about KB in FC. Life isn't supposed to be fair, it's supposed to be worth it. That Kathy Bartek quote made its way onto the team t-shirts and into the mindset of the Tigers as they took on one of the best teams in the state in last week's district final game. Don Hoag's Tigers topped Lincoln Christian and took a magical moment to honor the Bartek family during the post-game celebration. Coach Hogue and the kids afterwards, um, after they'd won the game, got together in a huddle and uh, looked up in the crowd, and I could see Coach Hogue yelling, where's Bartek, where's Bartek? And, and you know, I wait, raised my hand, and the girls were right there, too, and, and they all got together and did their KB cheer again. So it was, uh, you know, it was a neat tribute to her. Mitchell Harling was proud to share in that touching salute to Kathy's family. Coach Hogue thought it'd be great to recognize them and point them out and just show to the family how much it's meant for her to be along, even though she's not here, be along for the ride and be an integral part of the season. I had no idea before any of this that two blue shoelaces and, and two letters of the alphabet a way to break down a huddle and 14 sweaty guys could could mean so much to me and to do something so much bigger than themselves. KB on three. One, two, three. KB! The Tigers didn't end up winning a state championship, but boy did they represent Fall City and the memory of Kathy Bartek in a very meaningful way. Off we go now to April, and that's when I discovered that Carl Thompson was a rare breed indeed. Even on the doorstep of his 87th birthday, Carl was showing no signs of slowing down after nearly 60 years of battling bulls in barns. You're up, Bob. You're up. Carl Thompson is a ring man. Yes, yes, yes. Carl started working at the Albion sale barn in the mid 50s. Then he started working here at the Fullerton Livestock Market in 1964. Generally, when they, they come in, they generally turn around and go right back towards the gate, and you got to be out of there. We got cows win over a ton. 28. Carl has spent more than 60 years in the ring and he's been involved in thousands and thousands of livestock auctions. And he knows these critters can get ornery. You gotta be watch what you're doing, you bet. Yes, it might be a little dangerous, but as you can see, Carl has been roping and wrestling livestock for a long time. Well, it gets pretty exciting sometimes. <laughs> when the cow tries to get in here, there ain't room for two of us. Carl moved away from the entrance to the ring a few years oh, yeah. ago. I used to open the gate, but then a uh, cow kicked the gate into me here about oh, seven, eight years ago and ruptured my rotor cuff, so I, got a bit, so I can't uh, 
I can't raise my arm too high anymore. But he can still raise it high enough to take bids and shush cows away. A lot of those cows are wild. They're a lot wilder than they used to be. The owner of the Fullerton Sale Barn is Kenny Reekin, and he greatly appreciates Carl's dedication to taking bids over the past half century. He's been here a long time. He's done a lot of work, and he's good at what he does. It's just I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. It's, uh, and you meet a lot of people. People like Dean Church and Bill Wirtz. They worked with Carl for many decades. I see Carl and I said, what are you still doing down in the ring? And he says, well, I just can't quit. So he's trying to stay young, that's all. <laughs> no, I... Is it working? It's working. <laughs> 86 years young, and Carl Thompson is still going strong. Up, up. Now that is my kind of cowboy. Carl found a way of life he loved back in 1956, and he is in no hurry to give it up just yet. Now on to May, where we met John Jones times two. From the age of five, young John Jones of Lincoln cherished every step as he would pound the pavement with his grandpa, John Jones. Against all odds, they both took part in the 37th running of the Lincoln Marathon. John Jones of Wymore hadn't been running long before he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at the age of 48. Running has, has been something that, could, that kept, kept me going through the, through the MS problems. In his first ever 26-mile race, John competed in the New York City Marathon at the age of 55. That went well enough that I did New York uh, three times. In the late 1990s, John got a new running partner. My name is John Joseph Jones. They shared the exact same name and the exact same desire for running. I would do road races with my grandpa from about when I was five or six years old. Grandpa John and John III made quite a team. There's some really, really old pictures we have that are when I was three foot tall running these road races. He took a lot more, a lot more steps than most people did. We could have fun together. It's been awesome. When I, when I was a kid, it'd just be, I mean, it'd just be the thing to do. Sadly, that fun ended six years ago when Grandpa John had a stroke. It's, it's just not nice. Are you good to go? But what is nice right, is that John go. III wasn't about to let his grandpa's stroke keep them from having fun together. What do you think so far? How's the ride? Easier than I was afraid it would be. <laughs> <laughs> On Sunday, this 21-year-old Nebraska Wesleyan runner will be using this push chair that Shields donated to him to push his 74-year-old grandpa through the entire 26-mile Lincoln Marathon. It started with my dad, and he asked me, he thought, oh, yeah, that'd be really cool, and asked me if I would do it with the Wesleyan team where we would all push him just a little bit, and I told him, no, I'll do the whole thing myself. Oh, I'm stoked. I, I, just, I just don't want to crash. All we really know for sure is that because of Grandpa John's seating position as navigator, one thing is for certain at the end. I will be him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Somehow, some way, Team Jones crossed the finish line in three hours and 48 minutes in what will certainly be 26 miles that neither John Jones will ever forget. The 30th annual Nebraska Vietnam Veterans Reunion took place in August and one of the highlights of the milestone event was the specially designed t-shirt that was designed by a Vietnam War veteran named Bruce Bounds. This, uh, this has been with me for many years. And it's something that's been waiting to come out for the past three decades. It's a thought that I, you know, I've been trying to get out, but didn't know how to get out. And that is where Chris Kretz comes in. I knew this would be a challenge. Chris is an artist at Abonte Marketing in Lincoln. Fate brought him to me. I wanted to see it through and help him see it through. Bruce's mission was to translate an image from his heart to his mind to paper and eventually a t-shirt that would be worn by his fellow vets at the 30th reunion. I think a lot of Vietnam vets feel this way. It's something that tugs at us. 
there's a part of us that's that still in Vietnam. You know, obviously we're here, but how do you get that feeling out? How do you get it on? How do you get it on paper? How do you get it on T-shirt? Chris had the skills to make it happen. I made a promise, and I wanted to deliver. Chris accepted what one might call a patriotic challenge. You know what we're trying to portray, as far as a, a Vietnam veteran. I mean, you go back to World War One, World War Two, even Korean War. Um, the soldiers were heroes. The guys who served in Vietnam, guys, uh, men and women, when they came back, they weren't welcomed. In the eye of the younger guy, there had to be that that faraway look. Not only did you see that in Vietnam, but I think you see that today in a lot of Vietnam vets. There's that stare. After more than four months of revisions, this art from the heart was finally complete. I finally got it and, and, and did it and sent it to him and, and, and he was blown away. When I look at this today, you know, the finished product, uh, Chris did a fantastic job. And this past weekend, hundreds of Bruce's brothers got that same feeling as they proudly wore the t-shirts around Norfolk at the reunion. Can we ever separate uh, the young guy from the old guy? You know, did we leave a piece of ourselves in Vietnam? Even if it just helped one, you know, the one I did this for, uh, bring some peace, bring some solitude, and, and uh, you know, at least uh, feel like a piece of him is finally home. As you might imagine, Bruce's shirts were a big hit at the reunion, and I'm sure that there are hundreds of veterans out there that are still wearing their T-shirts proudly. On now to September, the month in which I turned a half a century old. And one of the best birthday presents I've ever received was given to me by Tim Miles. The head Husker allowed me the opportunity to try out for his basketball team. Mom, you are not going to believe this. Coach Miles is going to give me a chance to make the team. All right, here we go. Tim Miles, this is the office. Here goes nothing. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you, Coach. Good to see you. Come on in. I do have a minute. Let's do it. Lance, it's good to meet you. Um, I've heard from my sources that you've got a little left in the tank and uh, would like to uh, try out for the Huskers. Well, I don't mean to brag, but I did average almost four points a game at Fall City High School. Uh, that Was that on varsity? Yes. Have you been checked out by um, health care officials? Because, you know, you fill out that shirt pretty good. Ouch! Well, it's not about physical conditioning. It's all up here. You're older than I am? It's the field general perspective that I think I can help you with. That level of thinking, it's really good. Yeah. This is going well. <laughs> Let's start with Coach Wilson, our strength and conditioning coach. He'll be able to take you in, and we'll get a great um, idea of where you're at at this point in your life, uh, career. What, you're like, what, 55 now? Or? Uh, only 49, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> And uh, really? yeah, I've been waiting a couple oh, decades yeah, for this. Gray hair that, there. That's blonde. Yeah, really? Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. <laughs> Stick with your day job. That's what they say. <laughs> we'll try it anyway. Why don't you just play a little bit one-on-one -on -one with these guys? In my mind, this is how my workout went. In reality, it went more like this. And I was trying to box him out. Is that important? Now I'm going to go see the next It's embarrassing when you get done time. Try harder. Um, I don't like it when they're laughing the whole time they dribble around you. Just do better. Okay, just do better. I think I'm doing pretty well so far. Does it matter that they scored every time on you? Does it matter to you? What do you think? I kind of like this guy. 
Him? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll meet you up in my office and uh, let you know where you stand. Okay, thanks. Woo. Trainer! Well, Lance, uh, I have to tell you, that was pretty impressive uh, for a guy that was born in the early to mid-60s. Uh -huh. I think we might have a, a spot. Uh, I'm, you look like and play like and act like a guard to me. Yeah. Maybe not always the guard you're thinking of. You know, I know you talked about floor general. I was thinking more of like a guy that would guard our water. Hey, welcome to the team. Thanks, coach. I did it. Mom, you are not going to believe this. I did it. I'm finally a Husker water boy. Well, it's not like me to brag, but a couple of months into the season, I'd have to say that my water guarding career is going quite well. Well, one of the reasons I love my job is because I get to meet people like Clayton Herget of Hebron, a guy that inspires everybody that has the pleasure of getting to know him. Dreamon is by far the most widely used bull in the breed. Growing up in a sale barn, being around cows, it's just kind of a love that I've always had. The 28 and the 29 there are three-quarter sisters. Cattle have fascinated um, Clayton Herget for as long as he can remember. The first day I went to kindergarten, I was in the afternoon. The second day I went back to kindergarten, I got it moved to morning kindergarten so I could spend the afternoons in the sale barn with my father. That's how you make friends and make beef. From the very beginning of his life, Clayton has had to fight for everything he's accomplished. I was born breech, which come out backwards, spinal cord injury at birth. I spent the better part of the first 14 months in and out of the hospital. Despite growing up with a disability, Clayton's passion for agriculture would not be quenched. I showed calves, tried to do everything anybody else did. I was always kind of the go-getter, I guess you would say. I felt in the back of my mind that I had to do twice as much as anybody else, any normal kid, to try to be accepted as a normal kid, just to prove that I can do stuff. That one always catches my eye. Del Fike is a longtime friend and business partner. It's kind of funny how God puts some of the finest people in your life in your life at a time when you probably need them the most. So 29 is out of which cow? Clayton is an absolute mastermind with the Semitol breed and tracing back on what these pedigrees look like. Dell admires a lot of things about Clayton. His resolve, his moxie, his ability to get things done when, you know, everything is going against him. He plows ahead. This past April, Clayton hosted a farm safety day for all of the third graders in Thayer County. I just thoroughly love children. I love to see the smiles on their faces. Clayton works dark to dark every day as a full-time cattleman, accountant, and auctioneer. He's a very special, very special person. I do it because I love it. I do it because I love helping people and seeing people happy. Well, that'll do it for this 21st edition of the Best of Lance's Journal. I'm Lance Schwartz. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody.